Dilly in the body snatcher right here. It's a champ. Big up the sports and icon. Subscribe. Otherwise, I might pay you guys a visit. Right, article in the description box as always. So within this article, Eddie Hearn gives a brief update on Dillian White. Um, it appears that he wants to do pretty much what I wanted him to do and a lot of you guys wanted him to do as well, which is make an assault on the WBC title. And to do that, he needs to get past Dominic Brazil. In other words, he needs to fight him. Uh, me and a lot of you guys said that we would have preferred it had he fought Dominic Brazil rather than Derek Chisora. But of course, Derek Chisora has high profile money, so cannot knock that whatsoever. But going forward, he needs to grab hold of that WBC title. We know that Wilder has been ducking him for the longest time, turned down $8 million, all that kind of thing. So for him to do that, he needs to beat Dominic Brazil. Then he will become the official mandatory, and then it will be called, guaranteed called, to face the winner of Tyson Fury and Deontay Wilder. Now, of course, you could say, but if Tyson Fury wins, then there'll be a third fight between Wilder and Fury. And listen, we can't rule that out, that's for sure. But in my opinion, it's unlikely that they will allow that straight away because they've been waiting for their mandatory. They only have one mandatory done in four years. OK, so they'll probably say, so if Tyson Fury wins, of course, Wilder is entitled to a rematch to try and get his belt back. But he can get the rematch with the winner of Fury and White. So otherwise, he's going to have to wait. That's what I think that they'll probably do. But, of course, if, for example, Dylan White beats Dominic Brazil, and then he goes and fights, say, um, Tyson Fury, for example, he could skip Wilder and go straight unification against Joshua because the WBC do have it that unification takes precedence. Um, other sanctioned bodies, they do have it as well, where they probably will allow it, but they don't have to. But the WBC have always stood by it and said, if there's unification, we will always stand by unification. So for Dylan White against Anthony Joshua, whatever his offer is right now, um, um, I heard that the latest one's around about 5 million. Obviously, I don't know that for a fact. Um, I haven't asked Dylan, it's none of my business, right? But if he does, then he's guaranteed a whole crap load of money if he was to defeat Dominic Brazil and then beat the winner of Wilder and Fury and then go into an Anthony Joshua fight. Anyway, this is what Eddie Hearn said, as I said, article in the description box. Me and Dillian, we met on Monday. We talked about the likes of Brazil, Povetkin and Ortiz. They're all high risk fights, but I think he believes in himself. He's backing himself to keep winning those fights, keep raising his value. That will be in the end of April as well. And again, that's something we've got to deal with this weekend. So at some point this weekend, maybe early next week, expect an announcement for Dillian White's fight. If it's not going to be Joshua, of course, we can't take that off the table just yet. Um, as I said, Brazil, that will be the best option. Povetkin and Ortiz. Now, these are two fights that, of course, as a fan, we would love to see. OK, because these are guaranteed to be real slobber knockers, right? Um, where these guys will just punch the hell out of each other until one of them falls. You can guarantee that. But it does nothing for him going forward. So by beating Povetkin, he's not a step closer to WBC. And by beating Ortiz, he's not a step closer to WBC. The only one that, that would get him a step closer is Brazil. But as I said, if he ends up fighting Povetkin or, or Ortiz, there's some great fights and I'm sure you guys will look forward to it as well. Now, if you rule out the WBC mandatory situation against Brazil and just said, OK, just for a regular fan's perspective, Brazil, Ortiz and Povetkin, I'll, I'll probably imagine uh, Brazil will probably be bottom of the pile, right? But because he's got the chance of mandatory to actually sort out the WBC's mess up, that will probably be the best one. So what's he going to do? Listen, Eddie Hearn said exactly correct there when he said Dylan White does back himself because he didn't have to take on Derek Chisora last fight out. He didn't have to take on Joseph Parker beforehand, but he did. He risked it. And against Lucas Brown as well. Bearing in mind for all three of these fights, he was number one in the WBC. So he's risking his number one status all the time. He could just sit there and do what a Stevan done, just sit there and do nothing and get his world title shot. He could do what Brazil done. Brazil sat on the sideline for 13, 14 months and didn't fight at all. So he could do that himself, but Dylan, he loves to fight. Um, for him, yes, it's risk, but he just wants to fight. He wants to stay active. And every fight that he takes is learning because he has only had seven amateur fights, as I said before. And it's not a case of, well, he turned pro, so get on with it. 
um, with Dylan is totally different because he got forced into the pros, okay? Um, you can go read up about that. So any one of these three fights is a great fight for me, but ideally Dominic Brazil. As I said, I would have preferred Brazil over, over Chisora, but I fully understand why, because against Chisora was huge money. But as I said, let's not rule out Anthony Joshua just yet. You never know what's going to happen, right? You just never know. Anyway, article in the description box. As I said, go give it a read. Come to your own conclusions. Drop your thoughts below. Click the thumbs up to this video. And of course, subscribe. Catch you all on the next video.